Hello everyone. A uh, little different camera angle today. The POV view. Classic. Whoa. It's, a, it's an instant classic. A um, couple of you have requested it just as I'm driving uh, to do the POV view. So that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. But yeah, a little interesting day in Phoenix. It's only 64. Windy. And as you can see around me, it's extremely cloudy out. There's a lot of dust in the air. So kind of weird. I, also, it's wish you could see me right now because I have a microphone line running down my face and a GoPro strapped onto my forehead. So, uh, look like a champion. But anyways, uh, the reason for today's video, we're going to be talking about why you should purchase a performance car. Uh, I know with most of my viewers, that is not something that, uh, I need to tell you twice, but there's a lot of other people who I think would actually benefit from a performance car, um, and I wanted to go over that in the video and see what uh, see what the comments come back as. Before we get into that, I kind of I wanted to discuss something and just see what you guys thought about it, and that is uh, the golden era of of cars that we kind of just recently surpassed and that being in 2008 i had a i have an old car and driver magazine i was just looking at in my uh stash of magazines that i hoard and it showed the ctsv was on the cover there was a whole article on the mitsubishi evo the sti and the golf r32 going head to head and there was the tesla roadster which was a it was a pre-release model that they were showing with a 4.4 seconds 0 to 60 time and it was just like all that exciting stuff you know the the ctsv was just coming to fruition you had all of the cars such as the sti the evo the r32 going head to head you still have the sti you still have the golf r not the r32 uh but it was just an exciting time and now t things are different. I mean, you have the Golf R, you have the Focus RS, you have the STI. My question is though, is now better than it was then? You know, is it, is it better to have the RS than it was to have the, the Evo? Um, I don't know. It was just, uh, I was just looking through the magazine. It, you didn't realize at the time how good we had it, but there's a lot of really cool cars out there now. So that's what I'll say about that. Now, in, uh, in other news about, uh, you know why you should be buying a performance car uh, Here's why I think even if you're a person who doesn't care much about cars Having a performance car is just it makes driving more exciting Let's start with the outside of the car the outside of a performance car is generally going to have a sportier look to it It's going to be more more pleasing to look at people. It's, it might turn some heads um, it's gonna hold its value better because it's just not a regular car. I mean, uh, you know, you see this Maxima in front of me. It's probably six, seven years old at this point. It's just a kind of a bland looking car. It does, it is a 3.5, it has the quad tip exhaust, but it's, it's not uh, anything that's gonna get you really excited to go out and drive where if, you know, if that person was in a position where they could buy like a 350Z or a Nismo or something like that, uh, it would just it would just be more appealing. Secondly, on a, on performance cars, things such as the tires and brakes are always bigger to be able to handle. It scared the shit out of me. Uh, to be able to handle higher speed, to be able to corner better, to be able to stop quicker, and that's just safer to have. If you've ever driven a car that's not a performance car, like my girlfriend has a uh, Ford Escape. And the, it has 176 horsepower. The engine is literally like a vacuum cleaner. I mean, there's no power. There's nothing. It's fine if you're just scooting around town, but sometimes if I need to make a pass in the highway, I mean, I, I really feel like I may not make it sometimes or I'm not going to be able to get up speed, up to speed on a merging ramp. A performance car also does not have to be a manual transmission. Nowadays, most cars are not manual transmissions, even when it is a performance car. Uh, manufacturers like Ferrari and McLaren, Lamborghini, they don't even make manual transmissions anymore. So it's actually hard to find one. And the paddle shifts uh, obviously are quicker than uh, it is to shift manually. But there's just some really good things that performance cars have, such as safety features as bigger brakes, bigger tires, which yes, 
They can be more expensive to repair, but down the road, the residual value of the car is going to hold much better than just your average car out there. So th that's my argument as to why you should be driving uh, or why anyone should be looking, hey, look at a performance car, whether it's used, new, uh, or whatever. I, I think it's something that's worth looking at, even if you're not uh, someone that's a, that's an enthusiast um, you know just because you drive a performance car doesn't make you an enthusiast um, and just because you don't drive a performance car doesn't make you an, an enthusiast so uh, just something to keep in mind you have a nice GLI here coming up on my left uh, nice looking car but um, that's kind of what I think now now let's jump to the interior of the car Generally, because you're paying a premium to have a better engine, uh, better suspension, wheels, uh, maybe some, uh, there's body kits or other things like that, but there are, you pay a premium for the car, and for good reason. Because you're also paying a premium, they want to make it more enticing from a technological standpoint. So it might come with navigation. It might come with a cooler steering wheel. For example, the wheel in the Focus ST is, is full leather wrapped and it has a flat bottom on it and perforated leather uh, right where your hands are sitting. So it's it's a more sporty feel. In a regular Focus, the, the wheel is, uh, it's a cheaper leather. Uh, so it's it's not as good of a feel. It doesn't hold its, its look. Um, as well. So there's just other things like that, such as the sportier seats that hold you in better. Uh, they look cool. It's just something that I think, you know, makes driving exciting. And it doesn't mean that you have to spend, you know, 50, 60, $70,000 to get a performance car. For example, the, the Civic Si, which I love, is a, uh, what, $23,000, $24,000 car starting out, and it comes fully loaded. That's it. There's not really many options for it. You get you get everything right there. So uh, I just think it's a, it's a really fun car to drive. Now that that car in particular does only come in, in manual transmission, but you can still get the Civic Hatch Sport for uh, you know under twenty, I think under twenty thousand uh, dollars, and that's a that's a sporty little car that'll zip around. Has a one point five liter turbo in it. So uh, that's just a. Uh, something I wanted to bring up in conversation to uh, you know anyone that you know maybe just cruising through the internet and hopefully can find this video uh, you know as to why they should buy a performance car over a regular car it will also help you know if you can grow the performance market it helps for those special edition cars to be coming out and, for, and it gives the company a reason to want to invest in cars like that so that's uh, interested to see what your guys what your thoughts are on that um, President's Day, so the traffic is pretty light, but it's kind of funny how driving patterns in the uh, United States, you see how if you look in front of me here, they have, the left lane is jammed with cars, so I'm doing 73, the left lane is jammed with cars doing 75 maybe, but there should not be traffic ever in the left lane, there should be traffic in the center lane or maybe the right lane here, this is a four lane, well five lane with the HOV. But it's just funny how people, they refuse to let people get over behind them because their egos are too big to just get over. Whereas uh, in Europe, you know, if you're flying in the left lane, you see all the cars just get out of the way. They're always checking their mirrors, always aware of their surroundings. Uh, and here, unfortunately, it's just not like that. So kind of kind of stinks, but uh, that's how it is in America. It's also a really rough road. Um, I'm not sure if it's picking up interested to see where you all are viewing from leave in the comments below where you're viewing this from what's if you're in the united states what state are you viewing from and if you're outside of the united states what country are you viewing from how is what is it like to drive in your country do you have big interstates where uh, people get over for you, for you do they follow the local rules um, or do they not unfortunately in phoenix arizona it's awful people just a lot of road rage, uh, a lot of un unnecessary accidents just because uh, they're not paying attention, texting and driving, just stupidity. So that's my uh, rant for the day. Uh, Mustang V6 in front of us. Got a Honda Accord coming up on my left. Honda Accord's a beautiful car. Like that's not even the newest model and it's still really good looking. But yeah, so appreciate you all watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, I have plenty of content coming up around my Focus ST. 
Uh, also content uh, upgrades, installs, car reviews, car news, and then just sometimes I will make a random video like this. I love the sequential turn signal of the Mustang. Uh, but sometimes I'll make a random video like this just to uh, help fill in any gaps. So thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.